Hello everyone. So we are back again for the next exciting session on organizing cyber research. It's a plenary session. So the format of the session would be as such that uh, we'll have a panel discussion and towards the end of the session, 10 minutes would be given for the Q&A. So would encourage all the attendees to keep posting questions on the chat window on your right. With that, I would like to invite uh, the panelists, Professor Manjesh Hanavil. He is the Associate Professor, ICOR Associated Faculty, CMIN DS IIT Mumbai. Mr. Rajat Muna, Director, IIT Bilai, GEC Campus. Mr. Sachin Loda, Head of TCS Cybersecurity and Privacy Research. And the session would be moderated by Professor Manindra Agarwal, Professor of Department of Computer Science, Deputy Director, IIT Kanpur. Thank you so much, uh, all the panelists, for joining us today. Let's wait for the rest of them to, to join us as well. Hi, Professor Manjesh. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, hi, Sonal. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Professor Manindra, for joining us today. Let's wait for um, Dr. Rajat Muna. Good morning, Dr. Rajat. I, I hope you're able to hear us. Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. I think we are just waiting for um, Dr. Sachin Loda. Hi, so um, Dr. Sachin is facing some internet issues, so would request uh, um, Professor Manindra to please start the session. Please stay with, with us for a few more minutes. Let me just check uh, if all the speakers are able to join on stage. I don't see. Uh, OK, I see him now. Perfect, perfect. So Professor yeah. Madhuri, uh, may I request you to please start the session? Uh, Dr. Lodha is not able to join us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, so welcome to this uh, session, on, uh, uh, which is a discussion on how to do uh, cyber research or uh, promote cyber research in the country. Uh, my name is Banindra Grawal. I'm professor in computer science department at IIT Kanpur, and I have some interest in cyber security research. So do the other panelists uh, of uh, this session. Professor Rajat Muna is well known for his work in cyber security domain. He's currently director at uh, IIT Bilai. And doctor at IIT Bombay in the industrial uh, operation research department. Uh, and then Dr. Loda is heading the TCS uh, group in cybersecurity. Hopefully, he'll be able to join us soon. So I my job is to moderate this session. So one of the first thing that uh, comes to my mind when starts looking at cybersecurity research in the country is why there is so little of it, despite the, the fact that uh, uh, every single day we are reminded of its importance. So that's the first, my first question to our panelists. I'll request Professor Muna to share his thoughts on it. Why do we have so little cybersecurity research happening? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Munin. Uh, I think it's a very, very important point that you have actually raised. Uh, why uh, cyber security is uh, so little represented in our community 
in spite of the fact this is the most important thing and every day we keep hearing of breaches every day we keep hearing of uh, certain kind of losses and all that um, i think uh, it's not the phenomena only in this country because the cyber security when we actually look at there are multiple things that one has to look at one is the algorithm and uh, in algorithms i'm sure there are a lot of people who are working in algorithm in ensuring that mathematically and algorithmically we have uh, you know algorithms which are not breakable and uh, which are you know algorithm wise i think we are actually very much at the forefront even when we are looking at quantum computing which is around the corner people are looking at post quantum computing security post quantum computing safety and all that so there are algorithms there where we are actually going forward the second part of this is infrastructural security which is largely uh, focusing on ensuring that availability of the components availability of the infrastructure is there um, it is not so much for privacy and integrity of data but more focus on ensuring the services are available systems are available on demand and all that and that is one thing which is there is no uh, methodical uh, or no systematic methods uh, to build a system around it it is always a one up kind of a situation you find certain kind of attack you plug in the goal holes there and then you know hope for some time that there will not be any further security issue and then the third kind of uh, thing which is actually also very important is using these security systems creating a protocol for actually ensuring the data remains secure infrastructure remains secure and all that and i think this is the third part which is least uh, represented in the community and primarily because despite all the algorithms despite all the uh, security infrastructure and all that there are handful of people who actually understand the scenario processes and all that and it's a very very complicated uh, you know uh, system ecosystem and without understanding one when puts a, a security solution it is often a security solution added or patched on to an existing system rather than security by design being built into the system and that in my opinion is the biggest bottleneck and that one sees and uh, often that gets compounded further complicated further because if you ask any technical person or a layman so called security layman he would actually say oh i have encrypted my system i have encrypted my data and therefore it is secure and the reality is that it is uh, far from being secure the another thing that for common public banks and others have actually created enough publicity campaigns to say do not give your passwords do not give your uh, otp and all that which was a good thing and probably the only way to educate our masses on how to remain safe but in that process the kind of things that were actually propagated were actually saying that uh, uh, you know like for example you must secure yourself only you must actually send out your passwords and all that only on http secure socket http and all that which is one aspect only and over emphasizing only one aspect leaves the other aspects unguarded and weakest link of security then becomes the largest security so the real problem is that we need to educate our people in a proper systematic manner on how does one build security protocols around various infrastructure and applications and that's the only way out in my opinion thank you thank you professor muna and you have raised a very important point and i'll pick on this uh, once i get opinion of uh, professor anwal also professor anwal what why do you think uh, we are so let's say not at the forefront in the cyber security research okay uh, first of all uh, i feel very honored to be among uh, the professor mrin tagarwal and the professor rajat mona distinguished panelists who have a lot of experience in this so i want to like uh, first uh, say that like i am a little bit new to in the space but i feel that uh, it is also important that 
we start entering this field. Like I have uh, worked in uh, DRDO before. We have worked on various security projects. And now I'm in academia. I work a lot on machine learning. But as you see that, as you are rightly pointing out, there is a, some kind of void here. Like somebody has to pick this. Somebody has to fill this void. And maybe that is where like I am trying to pitch in. And uh, last couple of years, I'm actually involved in it. Now, uh, coming to your point of uh, what could be the potential issue, like uh, I see is like maybe uh, there is not like connect. There is work going on this uh, at uh, at very uh, different location, and uh, that is kind of things that we can see uh, because like uh, most of the uh, bug bounty huntings, these things are actually won by Indians, and most of them people doing it from India. Like people are indeed active. But there has to be some kind of concerted effort like to put all these things together, possibly connect academia, these people, and also industry. And in that sense, I feel that uh, SERI is a very nice conference and it is putting efforts in that direction. The very three keywords like education, research, and innovation in the space of cybersecurity is what really required. And I feel that, uh, yeah, I, I right away see that, yes, it's not that we are into this field, we are there. But it is in uh, different patches that need to be collected, and uh, more efforts like this, where we all get connected, like people working in industry, and and also like in cybersecurity, you see that there are lone wolves, right? Like they will be working on their own. Maybe give them a platform, connect that with the academia industry. In that way, like if we, if we all work in synergy, maybe like yeah, uh, maybe all of us are together, maybe like uh, make ourselves visible more. And uh, these are my initial thoughts, uh, Professor Manu. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Professor Muna made a very important point that uh, uh, we are doing quite well in the algorithms aspect in cybersecurity. Uh, did we lose uh, Professor Manindra Garwal? I can't hear him. Yeah, I think probably some internet issue. Yeah, I guess so. But we have been joined by Dr. Sachin Loda. Right. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Professor Muna. Good morning. Good morning, Sachin. Yes. Uh, sorry, some connectivity issue. I got to delay. Uh, I apologize for that. Yeah, I think Professor Manind Agarwal was also here as moderator. And uh, yes. he just dropped out probably once again an uh, internet issue. He should be joining right. us. Okay. Okay. So, good morning, again. Uh, so maybe in the meanwhile, uh, uh, we can probably continue while money yes. actually joins. So mm -hmm. I think Sachin, uh, one of the question that uh, Manind actually posed is mm -hmm. that while cybersecurity is a very, very important area and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, every once in a while we keep hearing issues related to cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Manind has joined. So one of the yeah. uh, comment that Manind was asking was why there are so few people working in this area? Why is there a shortage of people? Uh, maybe you could actually say a few words on that before Manind can actually take over the second uh, part of it. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah. Good to have uh, you. Yeah, good morning, Professor Agarwal. Uh, sorry, uh, some network issue I, I struggled to join earlier. Uh, so let me react to this question that Professor Muna just posed. See, I think uh, uh, there is a misconception in people uh, about who can be in this field. You know, uh, many of them think that they have to have prior higher education in this field. Maybe sometimes people feel that there are so many certifications and they need to have those certifications. But I think that's probably not a 
right way to approach this see one perspective at least we have is that you should consider this as a domain of problems and then you can bring whatever uh, computational expertise you have uh, to tackle those problems right so when i look at uh, our team in tcs we have uh, several different expertise in the team uh, right from algorithms design optimization program analysis design thinking uh, ai ml and so on and i'm sure uh, all of us who have been trained in some of these skills right can always bring them to table and solve these problems so maybe uh, some awareness is required on this that uh, that this is a very rich area with plentiful problems and essentially all are welcome to contribute and that's that's my quick reaction thank you dr lotha that's a very interesting point you make and i think uh, uh, it is indeed true that uh, get into the field but uh, i was uh, picking up on professor munas comment that uh, we are very strong in algorithms cryptography and so on uh, but if you look at the cyber security breaches more than 99% of them do not occur because of weakness in algorithms they occur because of weakness in implementations and oops Hello. Yeah, I think once again. So it looks like the internet is actually becoming a little bit edgy at IIT mm -hmm. Kanpur uh, because we. I mean, this is number of times that Manindas try to join and is mm -hmm. uh, you know getting disconnected. Uh, I think uh, Sachin, you also had the same issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think what Manind was trying to say is, you know, I made a comment saying in. three parts you know algorithms uh, the infrastructure security and uh, or infrastructure designs and the use of techniques to create protocol of data security and i said in algorithms area we are largely uh, strong and that's where manind was yeah i was uh, saying that and you know, have we been lulled into a false sense of comfort that oh we are very strong in algorithm and therefore cyber security requirements are taken care of and we didn't pay attention to the real heart of the cyber security which is ensuring that systems implementations are secure is that has that played a role in the the fact that we see on the ground that not a lot of focused or collective research in happening rajat would you Yeah, so maybe I can actually say a little bit on this. See, there are even in the algorithms, there are uh, you know, I mean, I don't think there are going to be a stream of new encryption decryption algorithms or hashing algorithms and all that will that will keep flowing in. I mean, uh, maybe five or seven or ten or twenty, you know, numbers will be of that order. Contemporary algorithms which will be in use at any point in time. Uh, there was a time when RSA was considered to be the algorithm for public key cryptography. Today, ECC is considered to be public key cryptography, and maybe tomorrow something else will come uh, as a practitioner side. Same thing about the um, you know symmetric key algorithm. Sometimes DES, triple DES, and all that, and now AES, and maybe few more algorithms that will come up. The the real algorithmic research in my opinion is not in designing new algorithms for encryption and decryption but to really find weaknesses in the existing algorithms and the ways the algorithms should be used um, and these are very interesting topics what is when very interesting uh, observation here is that it is because of these findings the protocols will keep changing their standards keep evolving okay and the findings typically 
are much ahead of actual exploitation. So in other words, in algorithm science uh, side, we are pretty much in good shape. Of course, we should be much better. There is a false sense of uh, you know uh, hope that guests in here think we are very strong, um, and therefore maybe people become a little bit complacent and. Uh, you know, not get into this area saying this area is saturated or something or it's of not much use. But I must say this, that it is because of the early and proactive research in this area, the, there are technology and techniques which are available in uses of this in various protocols to say, yes, it can be actually made safer in this way. Um, I do agree to some extent that uh, the, the research that was being done in 70s and 80s and 90s in the cryptography algorithms and the research which is being done today, there has been a major shift in the way the research is being carried out, the topics that are being carried out. And more and more research is now moving towards uses of algorithms, creating protocols and these kind of things more like engineering research than the pure mathematical research. But then there are groups who talk about pure mathematical research and very well organized in that to say how we can actually find weaknesses and what kind of things can be actually uh, used to attack an algorithmic weakness. And that's a very, very strong uh, you know, research needed in that area too in order to implement it in the data security. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Dr. Hanwal, you uh, yeah. think it's uh, yeah. somewhat uh, we have been a little misled? Or I, I, I feel so. I feel so. Like as you rightly pointed out, uh, yeah, algorithms, see, like most of the academic algorithms, we put it in public, right? They are exposed to a lot of scrutiny, like RSS algorithm or other algorithms we have put. Like they are in open domain. When they are open domain, like we, we know what are the challenges like what vulnerable what weaknesses are there in the algorithm but what I think, like as you also rightly pointed out the weakness is in the implementation and also uh like also like what all the applications that are being developed right those those applications are mostly proprietary like nobody puts their the, whatever the application they have developed in proprietary and most of these applications are developed in such a way that they are more user friendly like if somebody when using this application, they somehow misconfigure them or like they have been very casual, like for more comfort, they use, uh, often it happens that like for more uh, friendliness, they sometimes uh, reduce the security levels of these applications. And this, these kinds of things are opening up vulnerabilities, which most of the hackers are getting into your system. So what possibly we lack is a thorough implementation knowledge, like, like more people who know in and out of operating system like like we need more people like who know like possibly like in and out of kernel like so that they know that when something is implemented fine vulnerabilities will be there like when you develop an application you want after all it to be used by somebody and you want you to make it user friendly but whenever there is a vulnerability somebody has to right away like figure it out what is the vulnerability and maybe like if there are tools like which 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 actually have a very good knowledge of like how the kernels and all work, maybe they can right away look into uh, such vulnerabilities and possibly detect them or block them. I, I I completely agree with you. Yes, we are we are we have reached certain level of sophistication on the algorithm side, but implementation side is what possibly making missing, and that is where we need to focus more, like make people aware that. How, how things should work, like right away kind of get a sense that if something is going bad and possibly this will help us like uh, prevent some of the attacks we see. Thank you. Sachin, your, your thoughts? Yeah, uh, see, security generally has a trade-off with number of things, right? I mean, classically we have seen trade-off between security and usability. Right. Uh, off late, we hear trade-off between security and privacy. Uh, there is always trade-off between security and performance. You know? uh, my view is that uh, many a times uh, when we have 
formulated this problem as security community, we probably have not given enough importance to these trade-offs. And therefore, whatever we come up with, uh, many a times, even if well implemented, may not uh, meet the uh, requirements on the ground, you know. So I have two views here. I think one view I will have is that maybe if we consider these trade-offs and reformulate some of these problems, like, for example, what's done for this lightweight cryptography challenge, you know, where you said that uh, it's a IoT system and you need a crypto algorithm which is lightweight, uh, you see that there are different types of inventions, innovations required, you know, to design that kind of algorithm. So I think that's the one line I think we should follow as an algorithmic, I mean, since uh, our nation has a very strong base in algorithms and crypto, I think the possibility is to frame problem with those trade-offs in mind. Second view I have is that a number of existing security controls are really good. I mean, I'm sure Professor Muna can tell us a lot about that from a variety of uh, national level, uh, whatever implementations have been done, where uh, process from these controls, you know, uh, give us uh, ample security. I think that again has not been carefully looked at. So for example, people speak a lot about IoT security issue again, but many challenges are because people don't change the default password or people connect the device directly to the internet. You know, right. uh, basic thing like putting it behind some firewall or router will also work. So, so I guess, uh, I feel that there is opportunity both for new algorithmic research, which incorporates trade-off, as well as looking at algorithms not in isolation, but as a part of bigger process that is being rolled out, uh, will also help in my opinion. Thanks. So that brings me to the uh, final point, which is, uh, as uh, uh, Anjay pointed out that it is not that we are lacking in people. There are uh, very good uh, talent available on in the country who are routinely winning this uh, bug bounties and other stuff. Uh, Sachin also mentioned that it's not necessary for somebody to be a trained expert in cybersecurity. They can simply apply their domain knowledge into the cybersecurity applications. So, given these thoughts, what is the best way forward? How should we build on this community of cybersecurity researchers in the country so that we start developing major tools? Today, we do not have uh, you know, cybersecurity products coming out of the country, and that's where we need to reach. So, what should we do? So, let's start this time with uh, Professor Muna again. And so thoughts. that's another very interesting point, Manin, that you actually talked about. If you look at, see, primarily, I would actually say use of security, use of algorithms, use of various things are primarily for software engineering issues in some sense. Why? Because, um, you know, the way the software development has changed over decades, is a similar kind of a change that is needed in ensuring security is built into the system. In other words, uh, today, low side programming is a very common thing where people don't need to know programming and yet they can kind of integrate various components together to achieve a certain kind of uh, programming goals. Can we actually think of in a similar way where people don't need to know the nitty gritty or nuances of the security, but there are building blocks available using which the security can be built into the system. And one of the things that I think of is bringing an end-to-end -end security. In other words, we need to figure out who is the data producer and who is the data consumer, and we bring a end-to-end -end security so that rest of the infrastructure, at least from the perspective of privacy and data integrity, uh, you know, they don't really need to worry too much about other kind of aspect. Then the only other thing that one has to look at is the infrastructure security in terms of availability and denial of service and such kind of attack. So in other words, 
one should be looking at software engineering based approaches libraries uh, you know uh, creation of composition of software using certain kind of uh, integration systems and all that kind of things uh, major activity that one needs to look at is in this space if we can make security uh, infrastructure security solutions a very small thing to be integrated into the system i'm sure lot many more security experts will come in in building the system and moment we have this uh, a natural filtering process would be some of them will get very very interested in how it is getting implemented and probably move towards making our system more secure making you know doing research into it making better tools making better systems and these kind of things so i think it's a ecosystem that will actually need to develop and we need to actually create an ecosystem not every uh, person who goes into education goes into research even if it is 5% people who go into research it is actually very good thing similarly not every security developer security solution developer need to go into the research but if we can create a system create a mechanism where people can actually come out in a natural frothing process into the research that will be the most wonderful thing thank you thank you like that's very interesting god dr anwal you uh, yes uh, yeah i would like to reinforce uh, what uh, uh, professor mona told about creating this ecosystem i think that is uh, very important and already i think uh, there is some concerted efforts uh, going on in, in this for example like yeah, professor uh, agarwal you know that you have been uh, starting a cyber security center at iit kanpur and uh, there is also uh, such things across other iits one of the things i am in myself involved is the uh, national center for excellence in internal security at iit bombay so here most of the projects are related to either internal security or cyber security we possibly need more and also like maybe uh, this center should uh, connect with each other so that uh, we kind of uh, create a, like a, a common set of tools like whatever we develop mostly when we develop in academia maybe we will make, we can make it open source and uh, and make it available to the others like uh, so that they can use and already already there is uh, so much of open source that is available in cyber security over which one can uh, build uh, i mean uh, tools which are which could be used by end user like i see that uh, nowadays uh, this uh, security operation center socks are like pretty much required by all the enterprises and uh, socks require a bunch of tools and uh, i see that most of the tools used in soc they are not developed by any of our indigenous companies like maybe they are indian companies but they are registered somewhere and uh, they do business elsewhere not in india so maybe there is a good opportunity like uh, there is a bunch of tools that need to be developed and uh, and one can like uh, through, through all these centers collaborating making our uh, whatever we have developed open source and also making people aware like what is the requirement there like maybe like yeah people just think that okay uh, maybe participating in ctf or maybe just bug bounty participating bug bounty just like that is all cyber security is about maybe no like maybe more tool needs to be developed and there is a commercial value for this and as we as we talk about more digital india and we talk about more data privacy and all there is there is a scope for such tools and possibly that need to be made aware and make, make people aware that there is a career here and you can make money so possibly uh, like if we if we can start making our young generation start knowing about this by collaboration across all these centers i think uh, I, i don't see like uh, this is uh, too difficult like uh, we we create a whatever professor mona alluded like uh, to to create a very good ecosystem and make ourselves uh, visible, make visible in the cyber security space very much thank, thank you, you. Uh, sachin your thoughts Uh, yes, Professor. So no, I agree to what uh, what has been said. I'll just like to add to that. Uh, see, I think we do need an extensive collaboration between government, academia, and industry. And on all fronts, our country is very strong. So it's just I think matter of putting it together. See, for example, um, uh, as Professor just mentioned, several good. Uh, cyber security research centers have come up uh, in different institutes in the country that's a very good sign but see they will need access to very good problems 
and i think that's where government and industry especially service companies like tcs infosys you know big companies can play a big role because they have a universal reach and understanding of problems and all that can be fed into uh, the pipeline right problem pipeline for the centers uh, i think one other thing as you mentioned you know we want to build uh, strong products so i think we'll need to put in place a good ip framework and number of uh, ip frameworks are there uh, we have seen in other countries or other geographies we can take good lessons from them and come to come up with our own uh, nice ip framework that will act as a enabler and not a show stopper and then the infrastructure availability that's where i feel that professor hanwal's point you know i think we should get all these research centers connected and if they start sharing infra uh, we probably have larger infrastructure in place uh, companies like tc should also contribute there right so that we have rich infra in place for people to experiment and explore and obviously all of this is just uh, uh, sort of setting the stage important thing is to have talent in good number and that's where again our institutes have a big role to play so i just want to add here that professor muna i and some of us are part of this acm india committee on cyber security where one important item we are discussing is some kind of modern curriculum uh, for cyber security uh, that may also play a role you know to uh, help us uh, train people and make them ready and last again i think the important point on good products i think we need some proof you know that products work that's where again i feel that industry and government should uh, step in and they should be early adopters there is output of our research centers uh, and help uh, for sort of fine tune it you know because nothing will be perfect when you put it out first time so i think that's where investment should again come from government and industry uh, to make sure that our research outcomes succeed so those are my quick thoughts thank you uh, uh, this is a very engaging discussion and uh, some interesting ideas have come about firstly if i have to summarize that that there is no lack of good cyber security people in the country also it may appear so they need to be better organized and uh, motivated to actually take up some of the challenging problems and then you know, i think we have enough uh, talent to make a real mark there so with that the hope uh, i will uh, close if there are any questions uh, i'll be happy to pose them to our panelists here Uh, you can see one from Dinesh Kumar on data that first testing should be included CI slash CD pipeline itself as a dev set. So this is too technical for me to understand. Rajat, can you make sense of it? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, what uh, the question. is about uh, you know devsec ops which are uh, uh, you know uh, software engineering approaches for uh, ensuring that your uh, you actually are doing security by design by testing and all that so the question is uh, even the first testing should be included as part of uh, ci cd pipeline so that zero day vulnerabilities are caught so first thing that i want to actually say is that um we can only be hopeful that zero day vulnerabilities are uh, are actually caught because uh, any anomalies that one actually looks at in uh, during uh, development you know, integrate into the design and any anomaly that one would look at will eventually become non anomalous with time and therefore it is not that zero day vulnerability can always be caught one has to be always on a continuous development and upgrade path to ensure that zero day vulnerabilities are always uh, you know as much as possible we are one up and therefore we are able to get that uh, so it is not like one kind of one time thing it has to be part of uh, actual infrastructure design but then having said that 
I think uh, there are many other things which actually people build into the infrastructure side to ensure zero day vulnerabilities don't make their way all the way up to the application. Whether it is a IPDS, intrusion prevention systems and all that, or UTM and these kind of things in the infrastructure which actually catch quite a lot of anomalous uh, behavior on the network uh, coming in and uh, even trying to analyze and all that. Uh, doing this at the site of application, I think it's less productive because that means that such vulnerabilities, such attacks have actually come all the way across the infrastructure and reach up to the application for application to decode. This means that all your layer of protections have actually kind of failed and therefore application must have that layer of protection. So this is uh, my answer. Yes, it's a good idea, but then having said that, DevSecOps themselves are not used in all the software development to start with. I think it's only about maybe 2%, 3% applications which implement DevSecOps. A uh, large number of applications don't even get closer to that. So, uh, you know, this is, this is uh, my uh, take on it. Okay, thanks. And uh, we are out of time, so I think it's uh, uh, time to close the, this session. I will end with thanking all the three panelists for sharing their very valuable thoughts. And I hope that uh, on the suggested lines, uh, there is already a lot of activity happening and we can together take it forward. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you, Manin. It was a very interesting discussion. Thank you.